Welcome back to another Mindy Indie Showcase uh, Dev Convo. Uh, I'm Kyle. Along with me today from the six one side is Matt. And today Hello. we're with uh, the dev behind An Anku uh, from Alchemy Games. And Alan is here with us. Alan, how are you? Hi. I'm very fine. Thank you. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much for letting us uh, showcase your game in our little indie shindig. Uh, it looks awesome. And we're very excited to talk to you about it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so before we get into the, the game and your journey as a game dev, um, where are you from? And uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I'm from France in a, in a city uh, named Nantes on the west coast of France. Um, and yeah, always live here. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, how what is the uh, the game dev uh, like in in France? Is it are there a lot of like indie studios over there? Yeah, um, quite quite a lot of indie studios with with uh, um, very different sizes. Um, so there are a lot of solo devs and small team like us. There are three of us at the moment in the team, um, and and it ranges yeah from from very very small team like us to um a few a few dozens um game devs in some studios and yeah and and, and big ones uh, like obviously ubisoft or mm -hmm. or big studios uh like asobo in france or Ankama or quantic game yeah it's like that sweet um and uh ananku is uh if i'm not mistaken your fourth game yes both com commercial game, yes. Yeah, so uh, the other three would be Transcripted, Drifting Lens, and Four Tales. Exactly. And, and they all seem to be like different genres. So is that kind of like every game you want to do something a little different? Yeah, yeah. We 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 like doing new things. Um, so we, we like doing things that have never been done before. So usually to do that, we our specialty is to do mashups. So very often our games are mix uh, mixes of genres that already exist, but mixed in ways that hasn't been done before. Uh, maybe maybe Four Tales was a bit different, a bit different because it's it's uh, a mix of, of genres from the video game industry, but also from the tabletop uh, games um so in that instance it was it was a bit different but yeah anonku drifting lands and, and transcriptives are all mashups of stuff that you've already seen <laughs> but probably not like that very cool and they all have a beautiful art style too so it's it, thank it, you yeah it, it, they're they're awesome uh before we get into to that stuff i forgot to to ask um have you always been wanting to do game dev and and what was it the, hit, the journey to where you are now? Well, it was quite a long journey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it maybe it doesn't show really well with that quality of camera, but I, I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> um, so I, um, when I was a kid, I, I wanted to do in the 80s, I wanted to become a video game developer. But uh, when I graduated, uh, I chose a different path. Um, I, I, I became... Um, I, I got a PhD in organic chemistry. So very, very long studies in a field that has nothing to do with computers or mm -hmm. video games. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 26, I think I decided with, with friends to start a video game studio out of nowhere, just like that, because why not? Um, and I, I spent the, 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 the next 10 years really learning the trade of, of game development and actually my first really commercial video game is transcripted and it was released in 2012 and i began my path as a game dev uh, in 22 uh, so yeah it took me quite a long time to get there yeah yeah no i i know that journey very well uh you know <laughs> switching things up a little bit um so going back to that art style from the previous games is, is that uh is that like um uh oh my goodness a main focus of when you want to make a game something that's so visually striking uh um or, or 
is it like a yeah, yeah no we, we we always try to come up with something um um visually interesting sure. um because in in the current market you really got to stand out um to be able to yeah um attract the attention of players because they, yeah. there's so many games to play so we try each time to find an art style that is uh, trendy uh, mm -hmm. and, and quality um so and each time we, we, we the team was always small um for some games we were uh, more five so today we there are three of us for four tails we were five um but but each time it's a small team so we have to come up with an art style that is at the same time um uh, appealing and good looking but also compatible with the very small mm. production team that we are so each time we try to come up with something new so or and again um we we never completely um invent a new visual art style but we try to mix things we we did like in the previous years of months in in a few games that we really really enjoyed visually and we try to emulate some aspects we we never copy or duplicate one art style from one game mm -hmm. but we try to very much like we mix gameplays in mm -hmm. our games we also try to mix visual elements from reference that we have that's awesome uh what kind of indie games uh, are inspiring to you when you you're creating a, a new game so i can give you the reference for uh, yeah, for Coup, for example so alan Coup, uh, very obviously alan Coup was born from um all um or willingness to make our own vampire survival game yeah. uh, like stuff mm -hmm. so um so we we started with this idea and we we so like like i said we never do just a clone or a duplicate of something existing mm -hmm. so we 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 come up with the idea of yeah could, maybe we could mix that with uh crafting so there's a lot of crafting in Anonku. you collect resources you craft weapon you upgrade weapon and you fight hordes of monsters so yeah we for for the gameplay we were inspired by by vampire survival but also by v rising and also mm. um uh, other games um um the more recent game games like Hades or 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 curse of the dead gods uh mm -hmm. games like that um and visually uh Alan Coup was really influenced a lot by uh, a recent game named Somerville. Uh, I don't know if oh. you, you guys know that. Yeah. Um, and so and also games in with uh, close art style like uh, Inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Inside and Somerville were probably our two main visual inspiration for for the game. Well, at least in terms of video games, they are also. Sure a few inspirations um more um more from comic books and stuff like that Sweet. uh but yeah yeah and it looks looks beautiful uh <laughs> in the the trailer that's on the steam page seeing the amount of enemies all at one time is <laughs> It can become <laughs> a, a bit frantic, yes. Yeah. How many how many enemies on, on screen? Do you have a number of that? Um well um we usually on my computer uh so I, I, at, at home i have a very good computer at mm -hmm. work i have very low, low <laughs> i have very low specs and I, I prefer to work with low specs to be sure not mm -hmm. getting too crazy That's um, great, yeah. so um the the test i've done uh, at home um i'm i'm able to uh display and, and manage um like four or five thousand enemies at the same time but Ooh. on my so i don't think that we will actually get that sure. crazy in the, <laughs> in the game because on on my computer at uh, at work uh usually it starts to uh, yeah, stutter a bit uh when we when you reach two or three thousand so we would we probably have several hundred monsters uh on screen or near the edge of, of edges of the screen but uh yeah we probably 
try to be reasonable and not go too <laughs> much of the two thousands. I yeah, think. Yeah, for sure. Um, because yeah, yeah, he, he, games like uh, Vampire Survivors go sometimes over on these limits, but uh, we we have a three D uh, we have a three D games with a bit more stuff to manage visually shadows mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So obviously, you will be able to. Uh, deactivate them if your computer is not uh, powerful enough to uh, display those guys, those kind of uh, of detail. Mm -hmm. um, but even even that, we had to make a, a few concessions or use a few tricks. Uh, for example, all all the three D enemies. So usually in a um, in a three D game, you know, enemies are animated with skeletons and what you call skins. So you you skin um, a mesh an object on on a mm -hmm. 3D skeleton, and that's definitely not the case here for an Anku. All nearly all enemies are actually sequences of of mesh of meshes, sequences of of 3D objects that are just swapped in time, and they they are definitely not uh, animated by skeletons and skins because it would cost cost too much. Um, so that's um. A lot of tricks like that to optimize. So the uh, would it be appropriate to say it's like closer to like sprites? Yeah, it's like sprites, but in three D. Uh, it's really sequences of of, of objects. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> what a, That's a nice trick. <laughs> what is the um, the narrative of Ananku? Uh, I believe Matt looked it up and, and was very intrigued by some of the lore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the the Anku, um, so the game is called Ananku because uh, Ananku is the um, uh, the Breton word to say the Anku. So and and the Anku is a mythical character from from Brittany uh, you could say it's it's very very much like uh, I don't know how how you say it in, in English Caron uh, from you oh. know, the, you know the, 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 the character Caron from Hades yes so yep. from the, the mm -hmm. Greek mythology so the the Anku in 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 Brittany uh, legends is is a lot like uh, Caron so it's um, an um, um, supernatural entity helping spirits to go from the world of the living to the world of the dead, and it's not it's not dead. It's it's not death itself, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. more like a servant of death. And one key aspect of the legend of the Anku is that the Anku is not always the same person. Each year, the Anku is a new person, and it's actually the last dead person from the previous year. Oh, oh. that's cool. That's and, interesting. Yeah, and we use this legend to justify uh, the fact that uh, for each run, uh, you play a different character, which which had a different profession when he was living, and you play an Anku using the tools of the trade of that old self that you were when when you were when you were alive um, and so the the game when, when again we we launch in early access you will have access to two classes the soldier and the apothecary uh, but we will add classes so we know that the next one will be the nun uh, after mm -hmm. that there will be probably um, uh, there will be a smith a fisherman uh, a cook a peasant a uh, hunter. Um, so we have already eight classes planned for the coming months, and maybe more after that. That's awesome. Uh, I, I love that 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 premise. It's a very very cool. Um, what uh, what makes a good uh, a roguelike in your uh, opinion? So what i like is the the fact that each each time you play the the, the, the mechanics are changing because we are yet with the new skills or the new items or the new so I, I i like being able to experiment with new builds mm -hmm. uh what we 
So we, we definitely want with the new classes, the, the items that you can craft and, and decide how you want to combine them for your current run. So I, we very much uh, uh, try to create different uh, scenarios and different uh, situations. Um, uh, we create enemies. Uh, each time we create a new enemy, we, we try to uh, imagine what it brings in terms of, um, of gameplay, in terms of, of what it, uh, how, uh, how, how do you have to beat it, what is more efficient against this enemy, what, what would be less efficient. Um, and we try always, each time you, we add a new monster, it's not just a skin, it's, it, it must be a new challenge, a new mini challenge that you have to overcome. And each time we add a new item uh, or a new class, it must be a new way for you to play or a new challenge to overcome. And what we will try to do as much as possible is removing all the grind that you can have in some of those games. We, we want you to unlock new features, new enemies, new items, new challenges just by doing stuff, but never repeatedly, you, you will never have to feel gorgeous. That is something mm -hmm. that I don't very, that I don't like very much in, uh, in roguelikes. Um, and, and that, that is what we will try to do with Anonku is just, yeah, you will have a lot of challenges harder and harder. And, and each time you, you manage to complete one, you will unlock a new thing, either a new challenge to, to defeat or, or new ways to defeat harder challenges by unlocking new classes or new items. Sweet. What is your favorite class so far? So in, in the game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we, yeah, for, for now, we only have two, two classes. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have a preference right now. We, we really try to make them feel different and play mm. different um at, well actually at the moment we are very much hard at work on the second class so it's not it's not yet finished we we have to finish it for in because we we release the early access in, in the next few weeks mm -hmm. uh so we we try to make it as interesting as the as a soldier which was the first class we are pretty satisfied with how it plays right now there, there is room for improvements but we are, we are pretty satisfied. So we want to make a, a class that is as good as that, uh, but, but plays differently. Uh, so yeah, R right now I don't have a favorite, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, may maybe later I will have one, but uh, not, not today. Well, what, what's your favorite class outside of your game? Like, what do you prefer playing? Do you like quick characters? Do you like oh. more heavy characters? So when I play games, you know, like roguelikes or, or, or hack and slashes, my mm -hmm. first pick is always uh, um, close range or melee types with lots of armor. I like, um, yeah. I like being um, close to the action at all times. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want that. And I also, um, when in, in my first, first playthrough, in games and it's the same when i play games like dark souls on those kind of game of game i always play knights classes or stuff like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> i want to be resilient i want to have time to understand how the enemies work or the bosses work uh, i don't want to die uh, <laughs> I, I, just with one hit uh, so i usually take very resistant classes and and, and close close range uh, or melee uh, because that's what I prefer in terms of game feel usually. Yeah, awesome. I'm really interested on that, uh, the fisherman class. Yeah. How the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so Alan, thank you so much for, for joining us and, and talking about your game. Uh, when can we expect uh, Ananku to release and where can people expect to play it? So the... The early access will be released on Steam, at least for now, exclusively on Steam uh, during the month of August. The uh, the actual date will be announced pretty soon, um, mm -hmm. but it will be in the month of August. And and we have already a very intense or yeah um, yeah intense roadmap uh, for the updates. We will try for 
for the first few weeks and months to have uh, two updates per month with each times new 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 enemies new levels new maps new classes new items uh, so we already have so the, the the release for for the month of august we we have already a first patch planned for the, the beginning of september another patch somewhere and <clears throat> somewhere after the, the the first half of september something like that awesome uh, thank you again so much for joining us and, and for showing your game. I know I just said that, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, <laughs> make sure you check out uh, the trailer for Ananku uh, or watch the full showcase, which should be live right now if you're watching this. And uh, please play more indies. We love you very much. And uh, we'll catch you for the next one very soon. Bye. Thank you.